I'm Jennifer Gilmore and I'm an author and advocate for women in abusive relationships. I want to get to the answers to the questions that many have from those that work in the domestic abuse sector, getting an inside feel of what it's really like in their job role and sharing it with all of you. Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of the Hashtag Abuse Talk podcast. Some of you may be watching on YouTube, hello. And I am so delighted to have Tracy Rector with us today. In fact, we met over a Twitter chat and we had her come on and have a discussion and she was a guest and it felt only right to bring her onto the podcast and if you're on YouTube you'll be able to watch the trailer of No Ordinary Love but anyway here's Tracy she's right here next to me even though we're in different parts of the world uh, welcome Tracy nice to um to actually meet you after those discussions that we've had Thank you so much for inviting me on today. I'm really excited to talk about the film with your audience. No, yeah, and um, obviously we've had um, already that discussion about lived experience and, you know, the portrayal of um, domestic abuse in films and TV, and that's certainly been something that's been the heart of your project. So before we get into that, could you tell us a bit about you and um, your background, where you, where you are as well? Certainly. Well, I'm in the U.S., in Texas, which you can probably tell as soon as I start talking. I was um, in an abusive marriage for 23 years. And for the most part, I didn't realize that it was an abusive marriage, which I think a lot of victims feel that way, unless it's blatantly physical. Oftentimes we question ourselves whether this is really abuse or not. And from that experience, After I left the marriage and through the healing process, I served on the board of directors for a domestic violence agency in our area for seven years and two years as board chair. So through that experience, I learned a lot more about it other than just from my own experience, all the statistics and the details and what works and what doesn't work and what we're doing in in this field right now. And from that, I realized that there is a huge lack of awareness with victims and survivors. It's either they lack the awareness that the services are there available for them, or they don't have the awareness that the situation that they're in is very dangerous and Mm -hmm. could kill them. And so from that, I really, it was like, it kept me up at night. What do I do with this information? And so from that, long story short, I end up making a film. So that's why I'm here today to talk about that and how that process came to be. I mean, the fact that you said long story short, clearly that is, um, that has been a long process, I imagine. How how long has it been, you know, to get it to this point and ready to be broadcast? Well, it's taken a few years. So when I first came up with the idea that I wanted to raise awareness and it it's sometimes it's when you get this idea and I'm sure you've had this before it's in your head and you put it off and then it just keeps coming back and you get to the point where okay I have to do this so what do I do what do I put signs on buses or what so it ended up after thinking all this this process that film is a great way to convey a message Mm. You can get widely out there to a lot of people and do it in a creative way. And I really, from the very beginning, I wanted to do a feature film, not a documentary. Not many people want to sign up to sit down for an hour and a half and watch a documentary on domestic violence. But to put it in a narrative form, a story form, so people could really get into the story and relate to the characters is what I wanted to do. So I have a young friend of mine who is a filmmaker. She's an up and coming filmmaker. She's a writer and a director. And I just approached her and I said, would you be interested in doing this project with me? And she said, absolutely. And I I said, I've never done a film before. I don't even know where to start. (laughs) And she says, well, we need two things. We need money and we need a script. And I said, well, you do the script. I'll figure out the funding part. So that's where we started with that. So I gave her some directions of what I wanted her to do with the film. I didn't want to control the narrative part of it, but I did want her to absolutely be as accurate as she could with the issue, the things that we know now, the statistics, Mm. the details, the science, the research that we know around domestic violence. We've learned so much in the last 10 to 20 years. And so she did the research. And then we came up with a script and we started from there. 
So, so tell me, is this script based on, you know, your personal lived experiences or is it collective effort or did you it's, have a part to play in that? It's a collective effort. So she, what I, since I was just on the board of the, of the agency in our area, I connected her with our chief executive officer there and she was able to connect her with, um, 20 some victims that were living in our shelters and she could interview them. She was able to sit on a homicide trial for domestic violence offender uh, for several days with the district attorney here. She was able to go to uh, offender classes that are mandated by the courts for the offenders to go to once they're convicted. She did a, a few of those and she just took a deep dive into the statistics. I certainly shared my story with her and my other requirement other than it being authentic was that she addressed spiritual abuse. That was part of my own experience. Right. So she didn't really, it's not my story. It's a combination of lots of different, um, it's really from her creative mind, but she took all the research that she did to help feed that story. No, I mean, it sounds um, pretty amazing that she was able to go and do all that research and collect all that information and, you know, help with that creative, you know, point of view, because it's, I, I find it so difficult. I mean, on hindsight, looking back at my own lived experiences, it's there, mm. black and white. This is so obvious. Yes. But when you're in the moment, you just don't see it. And I find that's quite difficult to portray without it being obvious. So I know we we kind of spoke about different things to do with portrayal of, um, you know, domestic abuse on TV and film and maybe the viewpoints of people within um, the, the Twitter chat and sort of maybe the being a bit of frustration around that. How, how are you sort of looking at that point of view? How are you getting around um, maybe the fact that it's maybe over exaggerated or you know the difficulties with the correct and maybe sensitive portrayal of domestic abuse well i think the the feedback that we've gotten from those that have seen the film especially dv advocates in our mm -hmm. area they are all very positive about it they're actually their first reaction is surprise because they are used to seeing this what you call an exaggerated expression of it it's if, if you see something in film or TV, typically it's a little heavy on the physical abuse because that's what most people who aren't in that experience think of typically as domestic abuse. But those of us that have been in it and work in it know it so much more than that. So that's really the crucial part for us to show. We do show physical in one of the couples because that is part of that experience, that progression of it, that I think it was important to show that it doesn't start out with physical abuse. It starts out as a relationship, mm. a marriage, children, and then it's a gradual, I think you could say drip, drip, drip of abuse that adds up and, ex and, and accelerates over time. So that that is what's the, that's really the challenge in a film that's an hour and a half long. How do you show that relationship growth mm -hmm. and going down that, that toxic path of abuse? That's a real challenge. But I think China Robinson, the director and writer, really rose to the occasion. And so in the film, we have two different couples with two different situations of abuse. And then it's how those, all their lives are intertwined together. So we do try to show the range of types of abuse and how sometimes it looks more like abuse and sometimes it really doesn't look like it at first. So. Well, that's what I was going to ask next about the storyline. Um, you know, can you give us anything away? I mean, I know we've got um, a trailer, so I'm just going to go ahead and let everyone on YouTube watch that now just to give that anticipation. Sierra and Frankie ran past their father to open the door, letting wonderful smells of sweet potato pies glazed ham. What are you doing here? Where else would I be, sweet pea? Shadows in the sky Footsteps in the night Behind me I ran into a uh, church member this morning. I'm concerned. Targets in their sight Come sit down. Running out of light You can't be here. To save me 
Did she tell you what happened? Yeah, it's her husband. Red moon on the rise, you say your last good night. While I keep getting by. The more respect you show a man, the more love he will give in return. You trust me. We could be happy. It's going to be in their best interest for both of them if she's as obedient to him as possible while he's going through this phase. Why do you keep testing me? Remember when I bought this piano? Patient. When I taught you how to play? Gentle. I just can't figure out what I did to change him so much. I can't just walk out on a marriage. If his heart changes, well, then that's a win for her and for the kingdom. He'll get there. Praise God. We could be a perfect team. You're not going anywhere. It will never happen again. Oh, you are me. my wife. Get out of my house. This is my damn house. Mira, I wasn't in danger. I didn't even scream for help. Oh, you're not I won't lie. The most dangerous time will be when you try to leave. I love you. Everything. I have a blood sword. There's just nothing left. <laughs> Don't be so serious. I'm just cleaning it. But um, what can um, what can we expect when we're investing our time into this? I know you mentioned, you know that difficulty of sitting down to a documentary are you expecting to reach people that may be in the relationships or perhaps professionals to give them a bit of a wider view on um, domestic abuse or are you looking for even higher you know are you looking for people that are in a position of power to watch this film who, who who's your audience I would have to answer all the above and for all the different reasons too. I think one of the most profound reactions we've had so far from someone seeing the film was a woman who told us that she had left her abuser two months prior to seeing the film. And she was in a financial situation where it was difficult. And she was very much considering going back to the abuser to help with the financial problems. And after seeing the film, she says, I am not going to go back to him. I'm going to seek out help and do counseling and, and reach out to the shelter. So there's that aspect of it that we do feel like there will be, we know for sure there will be people in the audience that are currently in a relationship that is abusive. And oftentimes, especially when it's not physical, they still may be questioning themselves whether their relationship is actually abusive. Mm. But hopefully seeing it up on the big screen, they can identify with the characters and go, oh my goodness, that's me. That And seeing it up there, it really becomes more profound to them what their experience is. And mm. I think when we address the coercive control piece of it. That is what's really important because finally the victims, they have a name for what this is that's happening to them. Yeah. But we also address other things in the film so that it shows a court scene, a courtroom scene where there's a judge who's not very sympathetic to the victim and kind of um, chastises her for not doing things the way she thought she should have done them. And I think what I would hope is that we have people in the, in the judicial system, attorneys as well as judges, that are able to see it from the victim's point of view and see that it's, mm -hmm. it's complicated, it's complex, and it's much more involved than something that's black and white. And hopefully they will um, seek out training so they can learn a little bit more about that issue. But as far as for people that are in power, yes, our decision makers, our legislatures, our parliaments, whoever it is in your country, we want them to see this film as well to help them start the conversations mm -hmm. to say, oh my gosh, this really is a problem. All they have to do is look, it doesn't take far, you have to look very far to see the statistics of how bad it is. It's one in three women globally mm. will experience this in their lifetime. That's an enormous, enormous number of women that will be affected by this. So it, it would be on all of the us, whether there are leaders in legislature or in a, a small town or, or a county 
to see what they can do to provide the services for the women, so to help them, but also do the other piece of it, the education piece of it for the men to help us create um, a more healthy environment for our men to be in and not create so many toxic relationships. No, well, I mean, that, that sounds, you know, great. Maybe uh, it, was, it was definitely all of the above. I, I mean, I think when you're using, um, a, it's almost like a creative license to be able to mm-hmm. um, voice um, a message. Um, sometimes that makes a greater impact. And I know we had a conversation just before about, you know, being somebody who's been through an experience and wanting to reach people or help others in different ways. And that's clearly what you're doing with this project. So it's called No Ordinary Love. And I see that it's due out in June. Is that correct? That's right. We just have announced that the last couple of days. We um, had an article in USA Today, and we're announcing that our release date is June 15th on Video On Demand. And hopefully it will be in wider areas soon. So it'll first come out in the United States and North America. And then we hope to have to be able to enter the markets out in the world. Yeah, so obviously this is coming out in, in around August. So it'll already be out there and we'll be following the journey. So hopefully we'll have an update for everybody then. Um, but it's been so lovely to sort of go over this angle and speak to, you know, an executive producer of somebody who has had that lived experiences. Um, How can people support what you're doing and also find you online? We would love to connect with people out there, whether they're, they um, are filmmakers or if they're working in the field or they are survivors or victims of abuse. We're all over social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at No Ordinary Love Movie. And we're on Twitter at NOL Movie. We also have a website, uh, NoOrdinaryLoveMovie.com. And we're on IMDb as well. So all of those places you can get updates on where the movie is and what's going on with it. And you can see on our, especially on our Facebook page and Instagram, you can see videos that we've done of our actors about how it affected them playing these parts. Um, it was, what, that was one of the most interesting things about the filming process, which was really grueling over about a two week period, 12, 14 hour days. And the times when a cast member or a crew member would have to t- kind of take a breath Mm. because it was either it brought something up from their past or they just all of a sudden it's like they realized what this was like from Mm. a personal experience as living it through that character so that that was a challenging part of it well it sounds you know it sounds I don't want to say amazing but in, in the sense of that it's been that collective effort it's come together you're almost there um, ready to l- release it to the world, um, which is exciting in itself, but also with that all important message and, you know, sticking to sort of the truths in terms of what is that lived experience really like and how is it portrayed in our movie compared to other people's. So I'll definitely be checking out um, the videos on um, your social media as well, because it, I, I have to, I have to find out. And I hope it comes to the UK for me and um, so that I can sit and enjoy and watch it as well. So um, I will pop everything in the information in the description of uh, the youtube and also the podcast so if you're listening you're one click away to checking out the no ordinary um love and all of their social channels so you can go ahead and find it and um that leads me to say a huge thank you tracy for for, for joining me and for sharing your process and uh, part of your journey with us well thank you so much for having me today and i encourage everyone to go out and see the movie when it's available to them it is a romantic thriller that happens to have domestic violence in it. So it is a great movie, whether you're interested in this issue or not, but it also has that message component to it. But it's, it's an, on the, keeps you on the edge of your seat with a surprise ending. So it's got all the good things that film has to offer. Oh, thank you. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> thank you so much for having me on today.